and go to that formula for little b, what's cosine of 90 degrees? The screen, it's not touch screen though. One. What's cosine of 90 degrees? One. Everybody in unison? One. <laughs> 90 degrees. Zero. Cosine's the x coordinate. Zero. Zero, right? So imagine we're trying to use law of cosines. We're trying to use law of cosines, and that angle's 90 degrees then what would happen at the very end of this? This would be what? Cosine of 90 is? Zero. Zero. That's gone. Which means you have this right here, right? Just that front part? And wouldn't that be the Pythagorean? It's basically like your a squared plus b squared or c squared. It's these two sides squared added together equals this. So you could almost argue that the law of cosines is a generalization of the Pythagorean. All right, but <clears throat> we don't need that. We're just going to go straight to Pythagorean here, right? This squared plus this squared is this squared. Let's, let's work that out. 100 squared plus 250 squared equals W1 squared. Cosine of 90 is 1. You've been too much of that burnt grass, whatever you're doing <laughs> over there. You got a decimal, right? Okay, so what did you get? I got 269.2582. 269.5, let's just say 0.58, that's fine. What was 0 0.258? Oh, 0 0.258? All right, let's just say 0.3. Yeah? 269.3? Anyone else get that? Yeah. All right. That's how long this one should be, right? That's how long that one should be. Kind of makes sense, right? 269.3, I mean, that's 250. It should be longer than that. All right, so the first, the first guide wire, we needed no law of, kinds, uh, law, of, law of sines or cosines. All right, how about the other one? Is this a right angle? No. Not necessarily, right? It looks kind of like a right angle the way I drew it, but it could be a lot closer, and that would not be 90 degrees, right? So my second triangle, do y'all see the second triangle? Looks like this. Right? Like that. That's this one right here. You know this side is 100, right? You know this side is 500. Is it 20? It's 70 degrees, right. So from here to here is 20. From here to here is 90, right? Which means the remaining angle there is 70. So that's 70 degrees. Hey, check it out. W, W2 is this one, right? We want to know what W2 is. And we have the angle across from it, and we have the two sides next to it, right? Law of cosines. So watch the way I write this. I'm going to write W2 squared equals, right? It's like I'm using the formula for A squared, B squared, C squared, but I'm going to call it W2 squared should be this squared plus this squared minus 2 times this times this times cosine of that angle. Do, do, do y'all want me to label all the things or you want me to label them? All right, what do we want to call these? We have to label them however we want. So. You want me to call this A, call this one B, call this little C, call that capital C here? Is that all right with you if I do it that way? Capital C, little c, little a, little b. And then I'm solving for cap, uh, sorry, little c, right? That's what I'm solving for. So I'm going to use the formula for little c there. So basically little c squared equals little a squared plus little b squared minus 2 times little a times little b times cosine of capital C. That's the formula I'm using. So c squared must be, what's little a? 100? 
100 squared plus little b, which is 500 squared, minus 2 times 100 times 500 times cosine of 70 degrees. I'll let you all go ahead and crank that out and see what you get. While you're doing that, While you're doing that, I'm going to um, start drawing another problem up here for you. Anyone get it yet? What is it? 501? Is that what you said? 501? 0.5? Is that what I heard or no? Is anyone else getting that or no? I got 475.1A. Well, we're getting conflicting answers here then. Okay, let's take a vote. What was for what? No? 475? 475.2. How many of you got 475.2? I got, okay, that's, that's a majority. If you didn't get that, try it again. You got what? Five, okay, I better, I better do it. Let me see. <clears throat> we might be off with rounding, right? Like, well, there could be some rounding error here, but we should all be pretty close. You want to try not to round, you know, um, until you absolutely have to, right? But there's also the, you know, we're also not like building a bridge right now. You know what I mean? Like there's a time when rounding is going to be important. This is not when. That's my opinion. 475.18. 475.18 is what I get. So 475.2. All right. I'm not going to look up a video of a stripper dan dancing on a pole right now. That doesn't really fall into the lesson today. Let me see here. Hold on. Okay, I want you all to take a look at this animation. Let me try and slow this thing down. All right, back it up. All right, this is a, a cross-section view of a piston in an engine, all right? So what's happening here, <clears throat> if you're not familiar, is you have gas and air get mixed in right here together. Spark from your spark plug ignites. You have an explosion. It pushes this piston down, and that linear motion, that straight down motion, 
is converted into circular motion, and that's what turns your, I believe it's called your crankshaft, and then that in turn turns your transmission, and then that in turn turns your wheels at some point, right? So the way engines work is by converting up-down motion into circular motion. And everything is dictated by the relationship between the piston coming down, this arm that connects to this rod here, and turns. So it's very useful for engineers to understand how all those relationships are connected to one another. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna draw you that picture and we're gonna try and establish some relationships. All right? So I'm gonna simplify that picture. First I'm gonna draw it like, like a general picture. Like here's the piston, okay? There's my piston. And then I have this, this rod that comes down and connects to a point like this. Okay, so what happens is this travels in a circle like this. Oh, this is supposed to be the center. Okay, so what happens is, imagine this point right here moves around the circle, right? And as this comes down, the piston comes down, right? And then the piston goes back up, and then back down, back up, just like the animation, right? So that's kind of like a, eh, picture. I'm going to make it even more simple. I have up here a point, okay? Then I have this distance from here to here. Then I have straight down from here is the center of the circle and then this connects like that. Do you all see that? That's this and this and then an imaginary line coming down the center. Do you all see it? All right. <clears throat> What points, are there any points on here that don't move? Like what doesn't move in this picture, in that animation? What's the, what's the one thing not moving? What's that? Well, the piston's going up and down. At this point right here is not moving up or down, right? It's turning, right? It spins, but this point doesn't move up or down. Does this point move? Yeah, it goes around like this, right? Does this point move? Yeah, it goes up and down like that, right? All right, now, these two distances, this distance from here to here, does that ever change? Think about what that is. It's the connection from the piston to here. No. That's called our connecting rod, and that is fixed. It's never moving, it's never changing. It moves, but it doesn't change, um, uh, the length of it doesn't change, right? So just for our first example, let's say that that is, um, I'm just making up numbers here. Let's say that that's eight inches, all right? That's an eight inch connecting rod like that. And then from here to here does not change. That distance does not change as well. That would be the radius of the circle that it's traveling in. Let's say two inches, all right? Then we have the angle, the angle that this line is relative to the circle. So I'm going to look at this angle as being the angle from here to here. I'm gonna call that angle theta. Y'all see my picture? Anything good? What type of triangle would I have here if theta was 90 degrees? What type of triangle would that be? It'd be a right triangle, right? And that would be, in our, in our animation, that would be like right, uh, whoa, 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 stop. That would be, oh man. Uh, it's hard to see it. This isn't a really good animation. But when this thing is straight to the side like this, right, that would be theta is 90, yeah? All right, <clears throat> what about this distance from here to here? Does this distance change? Yes, right, that distance changes. 
And it all depends on this angle, right? If the angle changes, it brings the piston down, which shortens this distance, right? And when it gets to the bottom, that's when it's furthest down, and then it comes around, pushes the piston back up. Yeah? So let's call this x. I'm wondering, can you give me from this, can you give me a relationship that connects all of these things together? Just any equation you can come up with that connects them all together. You know like how if I gave you a right triangle like this and I said this is A, this is B, and this is C. If I said, hey, give me an equation that brings all these together, you would say A squared plus B squared is C squared, right? Is there an equation that connects all of these sides together? Okay, law of cosines, how? I agree with you. Sine theta over eight. So you could do law of sines as well, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of different relationships. I would like to see if we can establish a relationship bringing all these sides together. Let's try the law of cosines first, because that's what I heard first. How could you do law of cosines? Let me draw the triangle a different way. It's like this. This is two, this is eight, this is theta, this is x, right? That's basically the picture we have, right? Can you give me law of cosines on that right there? So let's, uh, let's act like this right here is A. That would make this capital A, right? Uh, let's call this little B, and let's uh, make that capital B then, right? And then this is C, and that would be capital C here, right? So how do you want me to do law of cosines? Which one? B squared, good, B squared. Because this side right here, the opposite angle we have is theta, right? And then we have these two sides. So I'm gonna use B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus two times A times C times cosine of that B. Let me write it all down. I'm using, I'll, I'll write it down first, I'm using this. Right, that's the formula I'm about to use. What's B squared for us? 64 equals, okay, what's A for us? It's X, right, so that's actually X squared plus what's C for us? Two and then square it, right, I'm gonna do two squared minus two times, what was A for us? X, and then C, which is two, and then cosine of B, but what's B for us? Theta, right? I'm gonna put minus four X here. I don't know if that's what you're asking me. Is that what you're asking me? The two in parentheses, what? Yeah, so A and then C. I don't have to put that in parentheses because it's multiplication. It's just gonna be two times this times this, which is just four X. You could put it in parentheses, it wouldn't be wrong. All right, maybe one more thing. Let's subtract four on both sides because that right there is a constant. Subtract four, I get 60 equals X squared minus four X cosine theta. Y'all see what I did there? Just subtract four, subtract four, boom, yes. Ha have I created an equation that connects x and theta together? Yes, right? This is an equation connecting x and theta together. Questions on that so far? Not really. I mean, that's just to make sure you can see that we have used the law of cosines to establish a relationship between x, which is this distance, 
and the angle theta, right? So if you give me theta right now, right? If you give me theta, I should be able to tell you how big x is, right? Give me theta, I can plug it in here, and then I can solve the remaining equation for x. Y'all are looking at me like I'm, I don't know, like you don't like this. I'm not done. You ready? This is, uh, this right here is an equation, right? That's an equation connecting x and theta together, right? That's, that's an equation that has x and theta and it shows their relationship. I want us to now do this. Show that x is equal to, now I'm taking this out of the book here. Show that x is equal to 2 cosine theta plus the square root of 4 cosine squared theta plus 60. Now I know you're, you're probably sitting here saying, like, where is this all coming from? Like, you know, why am I going through this? The reason I'm showing this to you, this is a problem that I give to my Calculus 1 students. So they have to do a problem where they have a piston moving and rotation. They have to figure out, I, I tell them how fast the, um, the crankshaft is spinning and they have, to, they have to tell me how fast the piston's moving. So there's a, there's a relationship and, and in order to do it, they have to understand this part, like where the formula comes from, law of cosines. And then they start doing calculus on it. <sighs> All right, ready? I want us to show that that's true, that x is equal to this. So that means I want you to take this and solve for x. Can you solve this for x? How? Okay, I hear you, I, I think I follow you. I want everyone, just so you know, I want you all to pay attention because most of you have probably never seen this before, what I'm about to show you, all right? So, <clears throat> if it looks foreign to you, it's because it should, all right? So, first, if I try and solve for x here, one suggestion is that I can do this. Factor an x out of both of these, is that what I heard? Yes? If I pull an x out right there, I'll be left with, pull an x from this, you have x, right? Pull an x from this, you have minus four cosine theta. Does everyone agree that algebraically that's, that's correct? I can do that, I can factor an x out of both of these? Yes? But what now? Divide by what? Divide this on both, and that would get you x on, okay, I see what you're saying. Divide this side by that? So it'd be 60 over, divide by that, yes? And you've got x by itself? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this would work, but hold on, there's a problem. What's the problem? There's no x. x is still over here. So in order to know what x is, you have to know what x, x is, right? This is a circular argument. You can't solve for x. You can't tell me you've solved for x if you need x to get x. Make sense? So even though algebraically you can do that, it does, not, it does not get x solved for. So that's not gonna work. Let me go, do you understand? All right, what about, is there anything else I can do with this? I'm a little concerned right now. Let me, uh, let me yeah, don't worry about that yet. We're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. So look, before we go on with this, if I gave you this equation right here, 
Well, here, let me do start with this. Let's say we had that equation, all right? You could solve this equation by factoring x out, right? And then, because this equals 0, you set each factor equal to 0, and you get two answers, right? 0 and 4. Agreed? Yes? But what if I change this side to a 1? Can you do that? Can you factor out an x? Yes. Can you set each of these equal to 1? Yes. No. Oh. No. Now, I want you to make sure you understand that. Look, if this is a 0, two things multiply to be 0. Look. This times this is 0. If I tell you two things multiply to be 0, one of them has to be 0. Guaranteed. Do you all buy that? I tell you two things multiply to be 0, one of them has to be 0, which is why we set them each equal to 0. But what if I tell you two things multiply to be 1? Okay. What if I tell you I have something times something else equals 0? Then one of these has to be 0. But if I tell you that two things multiply to be 1, does that mean that, that one of these has to be 1? Could it be? Could it be? Could, these could both be 1's, right? 1 times 1 is 1. But do they have to be 1? How about 5 times 1 fifth? What's 5 times 1 fifth? 1. 5 times 1 fifth. Isn't that 1? Are either one of these 1? No. Two things multiply to be 1 does not mean that one of them has to be 1. Two things multiply to be 0, then yes, one of them has to be 0. My point is, right now, on this right here, we, we factor an x out, right? We cannot say, all right, set x equal to 60, set this equal to 60, because that's like saying two things multiply to be 1, setting each of them equal, equal to 1. That's not right. You all with me? It's an important little aspect of, of algebra you need to understand. It's called the zero factor property. It only works with zero. You have to have it equal to zero for that property to work. All right? So this is not working. All right? Do you all agree we're stuck? OK, now I get to show you what most of you have never seen before. I know you've seen this, so let me start with this. If I'm trying to solve this equation, that's a quadratic equation from college algebra, right? And we have a formula for this, don't we? What's the formula? Your solutions are negative b plus or minus the square root, right? b squared minus 4ac. Remember all this? All over 2a? Good old quadratic formula. This is how you solve quadratics, right? All you need to know, what's a, what's b, what's c, plug in, you're done, right? Okay, I'm going to go back to the equation that we had before this one, before we factored the x. Um, let me put that x back, back where it was. I have x squared minus 4x cosine theta, right? That was the equation before we pulled x out, right? I'm going to move everything to one side. All right, so all I did here was move the 60 to the right and made it negative 60, yeah? Also, on this minus 4x cosine theta, I switched the order of the x and cosine because I want you to, to squint your eyes and I want you to see something. Do you all see a in front of x squared? Do you see something in front of x squared? Yeah? Do you see what's in front of x here? What's in front of x? This entire expression is our b. See, this right here is our a. This is our b in front of x. And then this right here would be our c. Most of the time in college algebra, when you solve a quadratic equation, these are numbers, aren't they? Some number, some number, some number. What I'm telling you is that if you have an equation that looks quadratic like this one does, sorry, this one, you can still use the same quadratic formula as long as you can identify what a, b, and c are. So let's go to the formula now. What would the formula tell us? x would be equal to, all right, what's negative b for us? Positive 4 cosine theta, right? All right. Okay, let's keep going. 
positive 4 cosine theta. Plus or minus, right? Plus or minus the square root of, all right? What's b squared? Square that, what do you get? Square the negative 4, 16. Square the cosine, cosine squared, right? So I get 16 cosine squared theta, right? Minus 4 times, what's a? 1, what's c? Negative 60, right? Negative 60. So I'm going to put that right here, negative 60. All of that, the entire thing, divided by 2 times 1, which is just 2. OK. Understand? That's pretty interesting, isn't it, that you can do that? Now this somehow becomes this. Let's see how, how that actually happens. Is it clear yet or no? 4 cosine theta plus or minus square root of, all right, that's 16 cosine squared theta plus um, this right here is going to be 240, right? All over 2. Got it? And now, finally, if I'm trying to get to here, y'all see I'm trying to get to this right here? I need to somehow pull out a 4 from these, right? If I pull out a 4 from this, I get 4. And if I pull out a 4 from this, I get 60, right? So if I factor a 4 out of that, 4 cosine squared theta plus 60, right? That's what would happen if I pull a 4 out of both of those. But because the 4 is under the square root, I can pull the 4 out of the root and put what in front here? 2, right? That 4 can come out as a 2. So it becomes 4 cosine theta plus or minus the 2 that comes out of the root. That's this 4. And then everything else is still under there. And then all of this is over 2. And then this 2, 2, and this here becomes a 2. Is that what we have? Kind of, right? 2 cosine theta plus or minus the 2 went away, 4 cosine squared theta plus 60. This says plus or minus. This had just plus. Well, why do, they, why do you think we throw out the minus? X is the distance, right? So turns out that if you put the minus in here, you're going to possibly possibly get a negative number and x can't be a negative distance, right? Because it's the picture. So we throw out the negative and we get just the positive. So this, this right here, 